Welcome back to my workbench. We're talking today about taking photographs from your car. It's uh, a great way to get close to animals without alarming them, or at least getting close to them without disturbing them to the point where they run away. If you take it easy, take it slowly, position yourself right, you can get some fantastic behavior shots and ID shots of animals without getting out of your car. In fact, I highly recommend you that you never get out of your car to shoot and photograph an animal next to the car. Uh, there's a pretty surefire assurance that you'll scare the animal away. And I see it so many times. I don't know why people do it. For some reason, they can't operate a camera without getting out of their car. But anyway, shooting from your car is cramped and it's awkward. So let's look at a few ways that we can support our cameras in the car and uh, using our car to the full extent as a mobile blind. So let's look at a few different options. The first one obviously is you just rest your camera on the uh, windowsill and people say, well, duh, you know, why wouldn't you do that? Well, the reason you might not want to do that most of the time is that it's just not stable. You can't just leave your camera hanging there, balanced on the edge of your window. There's a good chance you'll drop your camera, break your lens, so forth. And there is possible lens damage from banging it against a slightly raised window edge. So it's not ideal, but of course it's possible uh, when you're running and gunning and things are happening really quick, no problem. Just wind your window down, take your shot. The second method is using this nifty piece of equipment, which is so super cheap. I think it's one or two dollars you get um, for a few meters. This is pipe insulation. You just pop it onto the edge of the window, and then you've got a nice padded surface for your lens to rest against. While it's super cheap, super light, super compact, easy to transport around and packable, it's just not stable. So again, just like a plain open window, it's great to uh, just have that as a backup. The next option we're going to look at is a bean bag. These are, when they're not filled, are super compact, super light, easy to fold up and tuck away into a pocket, so really good for overseas travel. Uh, what I've filled this with is buckwheat hull, and uh, while they're not super expensive, they are pretty cheap. And as an alternative, instead of using rice, buckwheat hulls are so much lighter and they're very, they'll f form to your camera lens very easily. And um, uh, they're much more comfortable to use and much lighter to use than rice or beans or things like that. Uh, this bag, which I bought off Amazon, um, the only thing I've had to do really is to tape down the zip so it doesn't come undone and spill the buckwheat hulls everywhere. But as far as a, a system of supporting your lens in the car, they're very stable. You can actually leave your camera balanced there. Um, I would certainly wouldn't travel with it, and uh, you'd be in danger if you knocked your camera, it would fall out of the car. But at least you can you know, take some stress off your shoulders if you're waiting for a long time. You can leave your camera there balanced on the beanbag. There's far more padding and protection for your camera and lens. You can still easily shoot horizontal or vertical without any stress. And some of them even come with a, a mount pad on the top here with, that you can screw into your camera or put a tr um, tripod head on top. And therefore, you, they can be also used outside of the car, either as a tripod mount or just toss it on top of a rock or something like that that'll... Uh, protect your lens and your camera and give you a stable surface to work from. They're pretty good. Uh, if you're traveling overseas, just empty out the hulls. You've then just got the super light empty bag, which pack, packs away so easily. And when you get to your destination, just buy something to put inside, whether that's beans or rice or buckwheat hulls, if you can get them. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is a window clamp made by Manfrotto. I've used these quite extensively, and they're small, uh, relatively light for what they are. You put them onto your slightly raised window, to the edge of the window, on the glass, 
and then you mount a tripod head on top of that preferably a small one and um, you can certainly put them straight onto your camera but you are going to want to aim and direct your camera so the only way to do that is with the tripod head attached the small relatively light very compact um, they take the tripod head as they said but they, there is the potential there of it damaging your window glass um, if you hit your camera hard enough um, you can shatter the glass and they're quite fiddly to get level but they do work very well and uh, they are a great um, innovation to have just clamp them onto your window glass put on your camera and away you go finally we come to the commercial window mounts they're super stable great for using really long lenses um, if you put on a fluid head uh, you can level your fluid head up so you got your panning right and you got your um, vertical panning working properly um, they are hands-free you can leave your camera there you can leave it on the window while you're driving without the camera I suggest and uh, they incorporate a tripod head however they are expensive they're very heavy they're very bulky and you need to install them prior to going out on your trip which means you're going to be driving around with the window down which isn't a problem except that if you're in very dusty conditions or if it's snowing then you've got that issue to deal with now that brings me to my nifty little device it looks something like this it's just a this is just a piece this is my first one it's just a piece of aluminium it's been bent to fit this initial lip here that slots into the edge of the uh, window it doesn't touch the glass you don't use the glass it just sits pushing up against the inside of your door and using a I just use a door wedge to level it properly and a piece of wood at the bottom to to get my vertical and horizontal level correct I've glued on a couple of little uh, button levels that I bought on Amazon and this whole thing costs I don't know two five bucks something like that with a little screw that I can then um, attach a tripod head a small tripod head and away you go now the problem with this first device is that it is quite thin and light and for a window mount you actually need a bit of weight it helps if you have a little bit of weight to keep everything in place to stop it moving around when the wind's blowing it's pushing against your lens you can get a lot of movement and um, so what I opted for I built this it worked well except for that it was a little too light and so what I did is I made this now this is uh, just a piece of steel um, I've bent it exactly the same way as this is bent and this just sits it clips into the top of the door next to the glass so it's not touching the glass and then I have my levels uh, glued on um, this actually isn't quite straight but uh, it's not a problem um, this was my second effort so it's fine I have on here a, from small rig a small fluid head uh, considering the price and the size this is a really nifty little head um, the problem with getting a larger what I would call a proper fluid head for video use is that all of a sudden you've got this huge head sitting up here and in a small car you can very quickly have your camera banging against the top of the door or not being able to get your camera out at all so I opted for the smaller head while it's not perfect it's it doesn't work as well as the big commercial units uh, big commercial window mounts which isn't really what I'm looking for I'm just looking for a nice cheap little system to get by so I can have this up onto my window and leveled perfectly within 15 20 seconds and then uh, it's just a matter of mounting your camera and lens on the uh, tripod head this little fluid head and away you go it's suitable for shooting video and stills 
Um, it's stable enough as long as it's not really too windy because even with the really expensive units, um, window mounts, if it's really windy, your car's going to be shaking. And they're on rubber tyres with compressed air in them, so you're going to get car movement no matter what you do. But um, as a basic system, this costs probably about five bucks to make, plus whatever your tripod head costs. I've just got it bolted in nice and simple, and that can pan, tilt, and I can level this, as I said, very, very quickly, and away you go. It's also small enough, you look at it without the head, um, it's small enough to pack into a bag and um, take onto an aeroplane, uh, even the heavier steel one. And um, I, I was thinking of making it out of heavier, thicker aluminium, but something like this is so much easier to work with. There is the benefit of the added weight when you're actually using it. It's not going to move around in your window as much um, because it's a little bit heavier. And I just use a, a heavy hammer and one of these to heat up the steel and bend it with a few bangs and uh, with it in, in the vise. So just for a few bucks, you can have something that works that gives you stable platform to work off and minimal height added to your camera so it'll fit into even a small car window. So while it's certainly not as solid as the big commercial units, it costs next to nothing. It's so much, you can deploy it in seconds, take it off the window if you want. Um, like if there's a big truck coming, spitting stones and dust, well, you can have your camera and your mount out of the way uh, within seconds so that you can close your window up so there's all sorts of advantage to the smaller size and um, I recommend that uh, you just buy yourself a piece of flat steel like this cut it to an appropriate length um, do two bends and you're done thanks for watching